Hello, wonderful people. I'm Dane Peterson from Wonderbot. Today's video is about what really happened to Greenland's Vikings. The Vikings thrived for generations after they settled Greenland more than 1,000 years ago. But then, they vanished without much of a trace. The mystery of what happened to them has never been solved, but new research offers some clues. So what happened to them? And why did Greenland's Vikings vanish? Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. The Vikings were an ancient warrior tribe who were natives of Scandinavia from basically three countries, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. The group is still listed among the most furious fighters in history and are known for having conducted raids in several parts of Eastern and Western Europe. There were times when all Europe was trembling at the mention of Vikings. These brave sailors on their swift ships made bold raids on coastal towns and villages, collected tribute, and destroyed the unruly. Now, few historians doubt that in North America, the Vikings had visited long before Columbus. According to legend, the Viking Leif Erikson, Leif Happy, reached the shores of America hundreds of years before Christopher Columbus. More recently, scientists have received evidence that the Vikings really swam so far. The Vikings not only felt home in the British Isles, in the Netherlands, and in France, but also reached Spain, Morocco, and Italy. The Vikings called this fjord Hvalsi, which means Whale Island in Old Norse. It was here that Sigrid wed Thorsten Olafsson on Sunday, September 16, 1408. The couple had been sailing from Norway to Iceland when they were blown off course. They ended up settling in Greenland, which by then had been a Viking colony for some 400 years. Their marriage was mentioned in three letters written between 1409 and 1424, and was then recorded for posterity by medieval Icelandic scribes. Another record from the period noted that one person had been burned at the stake at Valsi for witchcraft. Archaeologists still wonder today. No chapter of Arctic history is more mysterious than the disappearance of these Norse settlements sometime in the 15th century. Theories for the colony's failure have included everything from sinister Basque pirates to the Black Plague. But historians have usually pinned most responsibility on the Norse themselves, arguing that they failed to adapt to a changing climate. The new findings and data suggest that the Greenland Norse focused less on livestock and more on trade, especially in walrus ivory, and that for food they relied more on the sea than on their pastures. There's no doubt that climate stressed the colony, but the emerging narrative is not of an agricultural society short on food, but a hunting society short on labor and susceptible to catastrophes at sea and social unrest, reports science. The Norse settled Greenland from Iceland during a warm period from around 1000 CE. But even as a chilly era called the Little Ice Age set in, the story goes, they clung to raising livestock and church building while squandering natural resources like soil and timber. Meanwhile, the seal hunting, whale eating Inuit survived in the very same environment. According to science, the market for Greenland walrus ivory tumbled in Europe at the same time as colder climate was making the existence much more difficult for the Norse in Greenland. Ice clogged the seas farther south and for longer each year, and data show that seas became stormier in the 15th century. Scholars now believe that the challenge for survival drove a constant emigration back to Iceland and Europe bringing the last Norse settlement in Greenland to a close peacefully without starvation or death by Inuit. A dozen years ago, many historians believed that the changing climate of medieval Europe was the main reason Norse settlements in Greenland expanded and went extinct. There are five long-term concerns with which the Norsemen continually battled throughout their time in Greenland. One, natural resources. Although the South is the lushest part of the country, Greenland's natural resources are not sufficient enough to support a large farming society. Much of the livestock the Norse brought with them from Norway turned out to be unsuitable for Greenland's colder climate. The grazing season for cows was shorter than what they were used to, meaning that cattle had to be kept indoors for a longer period of the year and fed on hay, which needed to be grown and harvested. As a result of the difficulty with farming, the Norse turned to hunting to supplement their food supply. 
They began hunting reindeer and seals on a large scale soon after they arrived in Greenland. The Vikings had some experience of hunting from Norway and Iceland, and the large-scale, communal, tightly coordinated nature of the hunt for these animals was somewhat suited to their previous knowledge. Scholars in the past have argued that the Vikings' downfall was their apparent lack of learning from the Inuit in this respect. The Inuit had developed clever and efficient ways of hunting whale and ringed seals, and although the Norse probably witnessed them hunt, it appears that they never tried to master these techniques themselves. Hunting in heavy boats made of wood rather than the Inuit's lithe kayaks made of seal skin, the Norse were arguably at a disadvantage in terms of hunting. However, some argue that there simply was not a food shortage in Greenland urgent enough to encourage a drastic overhaul of the hunting strategies that appeared to have been working well for the Norsemen so far. 2. Climate Change At the time the Vikings arrived in Greenland and up until about the year 1300, the climate was relatively mild, perhaps slightly warmer than Greenland's weather today. These conditions were favorable for growing hay and pasturing animals. However, gradually the climate became cooler and more variable until the Little Ice Age hit in the early 1400s. The colder weather made it much harder to grow hay and clogged the ship lanes between Greenland and Norway with sea ice so that it was harder to get ships to the remote Norsemen. 3. Contact with Norway Norway was Norse Greenland's main trading partner and originally had a high demand for goods that it could only get from Greenland, like ivory from walrus tusks. However, when Norway could once again trade with Asia and East Africa for elephant ivory, they had less demand for Greenland's exports. Norway also had its own problems to contend with, such as the Black Death, 1349 to 50, which gradually made sending ships to Greenland less of a priority. Less contact with Norway meant that Greenland Norse gradually lost touch with their identity as Christians and Europeans. 4. Contact with the Inuit The Inuit migrated from the Canadian Arctic to northwest Greenland in around the year AD 1200, which meant that the Vikings and Inuit shared Greenland for centuries. It is highly likely that the two groups had contact with each other, but we don't know how well established or favorable their relations were. Many scholars today believe that, in general, the two groups traded and respected each other's settlements. Barrett points out that the Inuit of the region favored female walruses when hunting, so the prevalence of females in Greenland's later exports could imply a growing Norse reliance on Inuit supply. He says that hunting season for the Norse would have been short, as seas were choked with ice for much of the year. The brief window of summer would have barely been sufficient for rowing the many hundreds of miles north and back. The legend of Eric the Red itself may mask what Barrett calls ecological globalization, the chasing of natural resources as supply dwindles. Recent research revealed that Greenland might have been settled only after Icelandic walruses were hunted to exhaustion. 5. Conservative Outlook Greenland Norse society was very hierarchical. Religion and the church were the pillars of society, and this justified great differences in social status and wealth. Some reports have blamed this apparent dependence on the church for the collapse of Norse Greenland, claiming that the Norse prioritized relations with their European counterparts over adapting fully to the conditions of living in Greenland. So that's what really happened to Greenland's Viking. They were unable to adapt to life in Greenland.